Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Lost Origin, make sure you check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your order using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, we're going to be looking at the new Kiram V Max. A lot to like about this card and has a lot of synergies with Origin Form Palkia V Star, which we know is a very, very strong card. This could be dethroning Ice Rider as the new partner alongside Palkia B Barrel that we saw do very well at Worlds actually uh, from a few notable US players. The reason why we may jump to the Kiram V Max train instead of Ice Rider is that the Max Frost has an unlimited damage cap potential. We can do for the requisite three water, discarding those three, um, 270, but we can go more and more energies on board if need be to get through, you know, Hisuian Gudra or opposing V Max Pokemon for easy one hit KOs. So it takes a lot of energy to get here, but of course we have Melanie for acceleration, we have Star Portal, and we have its own uh, ability here, the Glaciated World, allowing us once per turn to discard the top card of your deck. If it's a water, you can attach it to one of your Pokemon. So not just helpful for powering up the Kiram, could also be useful here and there with the Palkia to accelerate to, or even your uh, Greninja as well. So Gives the deck that little bit more flexibility. Very often with Palkia, once the Star Bortle has been flipped, you pretty much know exactly what they're attacking with for the remainder of the game, just because they have Melanie and maybe a Raihan in there. But having Glaciated World on board gives you more options all over the place. So that's a really cool thing about this card. And uh, yeah, it has that slightly better reach than the Ice Rider. So we are going to have a 2-2 line in here. The regular V does have a couple attacks. Frost Smash may be good enough to get through some one prize stuff. And Rapid Freeze can attach some water from hand to your Pokemon in any way that you like as well. So could be another way that you just randomly accelerate if you happen to lead the Kiram. Uh, so something to bear in mind there. We are playing a 2-2 line of the Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Still obviously a very strong card. Still the V-Star power that we go for in the deck because accelerating three water to your water Pokemon one in any way you like is still insane and the subspace swell is still very good damage output having some stable output is really nice when we're trying to build towards a kiram in the back it's not necessarily sustainable to use uh max lance over uh, sorry max frost over and over again uh so having the subspace swell option is really nice where sometimes the palkia can sit on board as well which is great from there, we have the Radiant Greninja, obviously an all-star in Palkia decks because you have the option to Moonlight Shuriken very easily. Concealed Cards has great synergy with the deck as well, uh, with the uh, Star Portal, and we have Training Core and Melanie as well. So lots of ways that we can get value from this Greninja, and of course, in an attacking sense, we can do the same thing. I'm still a two Empoleon V gamer. I had it in my Hisuian Zoroark deck. I'm having it in this build as well. I feel like a lot of these decks, like the One Prize Cram deck, uh, and Luna Rock, another one prize stuff, uh, they rely on rope to get themselves, you know, bailed out from this effect. So having double Empoleon just blocks that immediately. We have a ton of ball search in here with VIPs, quick balls, and ultras. It should be pretty easy for us to establish double upon, uh, double Empoleon very early. And if they can't rope that, you know, like they end up bossing and then they don't use things like Chorus's experiment and stuff like that. So the Convey engine really is uh, stonewalled by the Empoleon in a lot of ways. Even if you're just swirling slicing through the one prize stuff, it allows you to build your board behind it, which is very, very powerful. So I really like having this Empoleon option. I'm still a two count gamer. I know many times you'll see just the one count, but you're giving the opponent the option of getting out of it, right? And even though you're denying their draw in the opening stages, if you have the double Empoleon, you just you should be in in general crushing uh, these one prize decks that are su super reliant on uh, that engine. And of course, this is very helpful against the Reggies as well. I didn't mention that, but Reggies would otherwise be a pretty awkward match up for this deck. I'm not playing Tool Jammer or anything like that and uh, typically Palkia doesn't really enjoy it when you're not playing the Inteleon pieces. When you do play the Inteleon you can weave in your own one prizes and stuff a little bit easier uh, but here we're going to have double Empoleon again hoping that we can thwart the Gigas deck pretty easily with the swirling slice chain between your two guys. Then we have uh, a few other sort of engine mons. Crobat, a great ball searchable way to draw cards. Primate Wisdom, a great way to make sure we have water energy on the top of our deck for the Kiram. Uh, could also be a way that we can, if we don't want to Glaciated World for acceleration for whatever reason, if it's just not coming off, you can randomly discard like VIP passes or other things that you no longer need in the, in the game. Uh, if you want to just guarantee a discard with Glaciated World, that's always an option. 
and it sometimes lets you have one card deeper reach into the deck. We have the 2 tube of Barrel just to help out throughout the entire game, make sure we're staying consistent and protected against Marnie's and Path, uh, sorry, yeah, Marnie Path combos and Roxanne and that sort of thing. Also playing the Zigzagoon, I think Zig plus Belt gives us a lot of flexibility here. The 270 damage output is just not quite enough, and rather than having to commit an extra attachment to this card here and there, I would much rather have a searchable Ziggy. Also, as we know, Zig Belt is a good combination with the Palkia in Palkia Mirrors, so sometimes you stay out of range or force them to go wider again, so you can come in with another Palkia and take one hit KO. So I like the tempo a Ziggy can provide in a lot of ways, and it's very flexible in general. Um, from there, the Ball Search is again uh, pretty much dominating all of our items. We have Ultras and Quicks and VIPs in here, obviously very helpful with the Bibarrel engine to constantly reduce the hand size so we can draw back up. Um, we also have one Incense and one Hisuian, obviously very nice tutoring with the Irida, also helping out get a lot of our water Pokemon, which is the majority of our deck. Buckets are obviously huge here because we want to have them in hand to attach with. We want them in the discard pile for our star portal. We want uh, to be able to wisdom to a glaciated world. So the nine energy and the three buckets really does help out there. Hisuian, we play a couple cheeky two counts of stuff as well as some important one of so definitely a, a mainstay in the deck to be honest. And then we have a couple ball, sorry, a couple of switch outs. We have the rope, the switch, and the air balloon. Having such flexibility makes sense when you have the irida to cherry pick the right one at the right moment. Um, and then we have the courts, important to make sure we have star portal, concealed cards, and glaciated world all at our disposal. Um, and then we have yeah, the support account of two boss, four irida, three melanie. I don't find myself using boss's orders all that much. And I remember. Um, the world's list was actually a cross switcher build so i'm debating playing cross switches in here so that you uh use irida a lot more throughout the game uh but right now i actually really like melanieing like quite a lot i could see this going up to a fourth count because it's so important especially if you are committing to a kieran v max staying on the board and having to use max frost two times over the melanie is such an all-star it's a great card to have in here uh and yeah a couple belts to help out our damage output also so we have really high damage cap. We have answers to what we expect to be the most popular one prize decks in the game. And we still have a lot of flexibility with a variety of attacking threats from the Palkia, from the Ice Rider, from Empoleon if need be. And of course, uh, threatening and forcing Manaphy into play is always a good thing with our Greninja. So let's get into some games. This can be a little bit more work than just like Palkia Inteleon in a lot of cases. But there are some big payoffs to be had with the deck. So let's see how things go here. We are going second. And uh, have a pretty strong start, to be honest with you. Um, do I want to lead this Guru? It's really scary to give up Guru because I don't play any Pokemon Recovery. You could easily see an Ordinary Rod coming into this list for exactly this reason. Because uh, if I'm not Wisdoming, I don't have guaranteed Glaciated Worlds at any point. But we'll see what we're up against, first of all. Looks like it's going to be a controlling deck of some sort. If this is going to be Mewtwo, we're going to have a really good time, right? Because we have Empoleon for the Mill Tanks, and we have Kiram to one-shot the V Union. So we shouldn't have too much trouble in theory, and it is going to be a Mewtwo V Union deck. So already we can demonstrate the power of the Kiram's one-shot ability, as well as the uh, Empoleon, in this case being our easy answer to beat Miltank, which I didn't mention earlier. Um, but yeah, it's another benefit of this card. So that's going to be our intention here. Get some slices swirling as quickly as possible. Um... And just build towards a big Kiram. Pretty simple stuff. All right. And our hand is double raw VIP pass as well. <laughs> what more do you want? Uh, so we do have a VMAX. We do have an Empoleon. So these can be pieces that we grab early. Obviously going to try and grab good old uh, Greninja here. And I don't see a reason to not take the Bidoof. Let's have a look. How many switch outs do I have? I'm actually prized switch and rope, which could be their only option of actually beating me this game, but I've run out of pivot options for my dudes. So I need to make sure that I can actually um, prioritize. Firstly, Irida would be a big priority for us. Uh, let's draw a couple here. Haven't played a supporter, of course. Uh, so I, now I can Melanie. Do I want to... Yeah, Melanie sounds good. Melanie onto Empo. 
get some additional cards. Uh, very solid for next turn. I could attempt to grab a bucket or something here. VIP pass not playable in this hand, unfortunately. But yeah, pretty good start, all things considered. And I should be relatively okay here. Like I said, I just need to set up my board and I shouldn't have too much trouble in general. Definitely need to bucket next turn. We'll go bucket, grab. Oh, they're playing hammers, okay. I mean, they're always playing hammers, but uh, they just have them already. It's fine. A couple tails for them is no bueno. See Silene, mostly just a minus from their hand, I imagine. We'll grab Ultra Ball so they can just keep cycling, makes sense. And they're gonna Gormandize up. Alright. So yeah, we can definitely evolve. We can definitely grab this for this guy, Irida for the V Max and the buckets. <clears throat> we can do our combo, Wisdom World, no way, it's a water energy, let's start slicing and dicing and denying the lax. From drawing cards. Sounds like a play to me. And in the meantime, we're building up a Kiram as well. Happy days. So really the only, like I said, the only issue is going to be if we get trapped by a boss. I know one boss is already in their discard pile. And it's not exactly a problem, it's just, sl it slows down our roll basically, right? See a cape. We know they have ultra. Oh, they're gonna peonia. Okay. <clears throat> but sort of really halting their draw engine is obviously an issue. This is a new hurdle that the Mewtwo deck hasn't have to over had to overcome before. Not just the one hit KO potential, but also Empoleon maybe being a bigger card in the format just because of the Confe engine. So it certainly does get caught in the crossfire. But this is possibly a more popular card now. Gonna grab a leg. Couple bits and pieces in the bin, and just a pass. Uh, so let's. Keep grabbing buckets. I may as well take this out of the deck because I'm not getting to the barrel anytime soon. I'll just keep the option available to Glaciated World. I don't need to rush this, right? Um, so let's just chill. I guess I could do this, get rid of a VIP. <clears throat> Picking up another Irid is great. Just more buckets. Such an important card for the deck. The Capacious Bucket. Another water is always nice from the prizes. But yeah, I mean... If I could construct a deck to entirely wall out this matchup, it would, base it would definitely be this deck. <laughs> I don't think there's any other cards I would want. This really does do a job. So the Pukumuku actually does work. It doesn't get blocked by Emperor's Eyes because it's not a Pokemon in play. Right? Yeah, the pitch is not in play. So there you go. A little free advice. You can pitch, at least. Is it Silene? <clears throat> I 
We're just going to keep getting some world discards. Feels weird self-milling my deck against a control deck, but feels right to me. Not going to play the Irida because I know I just, they just took Shoes and Boss, so they're going to try and slow us down that way, right? Big prize card as well. There's the boss, so they can gormandize up. Mm. Ninja Melanie switch, is that better than Irida? I guess. Let's pop one onto the barrel. Save our blushes. The Mewtwo is assembled. See a hammer. I still have Star Portal. If I need it. I still have a bucket in the deck as well, so I can Glaciate it attach anyway. There it is! They just want it to end by the looks of things. They're going to union gain. Pretty impressive that they were able to union gain even under the... Uh, under the lock, to be fair. This is the beauty of Kiram, though. You hit like a truck when you have to. <clears throat> Should be enough. 
<clears throat> right, let's get into another game. Goodbye, Mewtwo. You are no longer a deck in the format. Not just because of this deck, but also there can be some scary Giratina stuff going out there these days. Mainstream Shred with the option to belt up. Definitely Arceus builds will belt up to KO the Mewtwo. I know you can play other stuff, but even just that higher threshold is too scary. The 280 into 280 is already probably too much for you. You have to overheal so much. All right, let's get another game in. We are going first, love to see it. Going first, I'm happy to bring up Palk, I think. Not the most inspiring hand. I might have to crowbat this hand. I think I want to save the Melanie. Uh, more ball search. So I guess I'm quick balling away s switch and ultra here. And just hold an ultra for next turn. Get the classic engine men down. Let's see some cards. Man, no energy is crazy. Okay. Uh, let's do this. I guess I'm barreling next turn. Man, that is so bad. Insane. Mm hmm. That sucks. Let's pass. Definitely a lifeline for the opponent, who could well be playing a Lost Zone deck that just has a Mew in here, by the way. Because I know Mew can oftentimes, be, or like sometimes, be a one-of in Lost Zone engines, but... I think going first anyway, you don't need to do all the Empoleon tricks. You can just like, hey, I, I was player one, I took the first prizes kind of deal. We'll see, though. Having to Pumpkin to get an extra Mew usage... They've done it the wrong way around as well. They should have netted this first, then bird keepered. Yep, they misplayed. Shame concede, or are they gaming? Yeah, right, they're still here to play the game. Oh, it's Dialga. Well, Kiram is pretty scared about Dialga, to be fair. About Dialga? Scared of Dialga. That makes more sense. Um, but hey, a water energy's appeared, which is nice. Um, I can definitely win this turn if I play my cards right. And I think playing my cards right means I'm not going to Greninja first. I think I need to get rid of this water, then get rid of another water with rope and just go for KO, right? V star KO. So I think I play the rope. Go here, get rid of a water. Get the bibs. Irida's game here. Uh, that's not game. But it's cards. Um, also not game. Let's thin some cards. Uh, I've used the Greninja. I don't want to Melanie yet, because it makes it harder for me to do that. So I think I don't play this Quick Ball in case I need to discard this or attach it for an Irida play if that's my top deck. It's not, so will Melanie. Uh, is that? No, that's not game. Um, Alright, they live in this time. Uh, we had so many ways to do it there, to be honest. It's a shame. Let's just attach here and pass. <clears throat> I 
This guy likes an emote. <laughs> Gets the th free mysterious tail, courtesy of us as well. And there's Dialga. Backupization sounds good. I'm gonna pick up Mew. No, picking up Pump. Jammer, sure. All right. Damn it, Palkia! <laughs> what are you doing here? You're late. Uh, let's thin this now. Uh, let's draw two. Um, Irida sounds good. Oh, I prized rope. That's a shame. I thought I was going to have a sick play with rope. Um, this is still probably correct to take. Just like this. Is the V star power just to deal with the Mew worth my time? Worth my while? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 160. I guess I'm just putting damage on the Dialga proactively. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. Taking away their engine and prepping Dialga does make a lot of sense, I think. That's a good pickup from prizes. There's the V-Star. Big Raihan. So Raihan Brave Blade is certainly a play here. It's a decent tempo play, but I don't know if playing for tempo is the right move here. Well, they're going for it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So I can zig ping KO. Seems good. That leaves Dialga with a lot to do and a lot of cards still in deck. And I'll V-Star this turn as well. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Um... Do 
just debating whether it's this palk here or the zig. I think it's the palk that comes down. Um, probably should be gusting here, because I have to give him credit, right, for just hitting the nuts. 12, 14. Got to give him credit, right? Credit where credit's due. Sounds like the play. Taking our time on that one, but seems like the right move. Not too afraid that I'm giving them training courts. Definitely overthinking when I'm in a very good position, but, you know, don't want to mess up on video, right? <laughs> That's genuinely, I'm terrified of misplaying on when I record, because you'll know it can happen. You'll know it's happened before. <clears throat> this, like, I'm thinking this opens up a boss line. But then bossing twice over two turns just feels so difficult when I'm... Or when they need to do all sorts as well. Like, maybe with cross switches, they can go cross, cross switch a KO here. I take out the Zacian, but they already power up a Palkia... Or sorry, an, a Dialga that can, like, hit this for two turns and then just take this out or something. They need to roll pretty high to do it, though, let's be fair. Well... It's a good start for them. They definitely need to attack with Zacian this turn to win though, and it has to be on one of these two. If they can't cross switcher, they're in a lot of trouble. Or boss, right? Boss switch. Avery is very good for me. It's just these. The reason why it's good, it, it, it makes the Diago play more difficult. Don't want to see a cross switcher here. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay, just more source. Source code. So pretty terrifying, honestly. I have no hand disruption. We're at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So I can zig KO. But other than that, I'm not sure what else I've got, to be honest. They can just have the nuts on us here. Honestly. Not sure what else I can do. I 
I guess this plays well into rope. Do this, I guess. But yeah, I think we're done. I think we're toast. They don't have much dig, but they just have boss in hand. All right. Always a risk putting the Kirim into play, of course, but we had potential game off of it and I mean let's be honest we were very unlucky on turn two to not just win on the spot <laughs> and they misplayed aggressively into us as well so sad oh what a mess am I having one more game I guess I am Ugh, sadness it was was it just greedy to put the Kirim into play what did it let me do it let me save my v-star power for like a lot longer to threaten more Greninja later but man crazy the hand was just so wet. like when I took out the Mew Dialga the hand was just like too well equipped to bat and reload all right looks like we're up against a deck that I can try and wall with Empo which is Pog so let's get rid of an Irida here. Or is that silly? I definitely want to use Guru, but I think I'm using it after. Or am I going crazy and just getting rid of everything and batting bat back up and going into Empo active? Maybe that's the play. Guarantee Empo active, get two water in the bin, try and dig towards hitting VIP so I can get the option of Palkia. Prized our Greninja as well. Okay, so we go here. That's really good. Uh, here. Batman. This, this, this. Six. VIP. You'll love to see it. All right. I don't actually have an easy way of discarding any of these energies, so I think I just leave them in the bin. And chill. have a chorus off the bat. I wonder if they are a cram one prizer or if they're a bigger threat like Gudra or Tina or something along those lines. Let's read on. Level ball means that almost certainly a, a small one prize build, right? Small. Yeah. 
many, many clams. Alright, trying to protect that guy, makes sense. <clears throat> cool. Let's evolve. Let's switch the top deck, because this isn't useful right now before I Irida. That's brilliant. Uh, attach the barrel first. Yeah. Play around rope. Uh, that's just for next turn. We do that. Do this. And we slice them up good. I see a bird keeper. That's not helping them get stuff into the lost zone. Double Empoleon. <laughs> Ta-da! It's really mean. It's basically bullying. Uh, but yes, it is a great way to stop the cram decks, of course. And I don't think there's a really easy antidote for that deck either. Like, you don't want to play that many bosses in the deck because you need to fuel anyway with Confe. And ropes are okay, but not great against a double Emperor. So it could be the play. Let me know what you guys think about this deck. Uh, the list and the archetype in general. How have you been building it right now? What stuff are you throwing in? Have you tried cross switches as well? I'd really be interested to see if you have because I'm a bit meh on the bosses. You can see how big some of our hand sizes grew there when, when we weren't getting hand disrupted and at times I feel like I could have been irrita digging for cross switches and had a lot more control over my games but obviously it takes up a lot more space than the double boss so I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.